Hey then guys, welcome to the Easter Cookalung uh, video, uh, guided video for, uh, for this weekend. Uh, those keen viewers will notice that I haven't got an apron on, I simply forgot it today, so I'm really sorry I left it home, but it will not change anything with the video, it certainly won't. So we'll crack on, uh, thank you to everyone who has purchased a, a, a video, a box this weekend, uh, I wish you all a very happy Easter, uh, super pleased with, uh, with the week as always to be honest, uh, but more so because uh, we were able to get the barbecue out, uh, you've probably seen on Instagram, uh, we barbecued obviously the lamb and the gem lettuce and it was wicked to get a little bit of rain, I suppose, I don't really cover some, but it is what it is. Okay, so without further ado, let's crack on. So your first little taste, as always, any newcomers, uh, this, is what we, uh, this is what we're doing, this is what we have done uh, for, the, for nearly a year, actually, which is crazy. So this is a tear and share, this is a Cotswold country flower. Uh, it's a nine seeded loaf, uh, probably my favorite flower. I say that every time we use it, but it is absolutely delicious. That goes into the oven, that's still warm from the dish, just quite a bit about half an hour ago. Uh, that goes in your oven for five to six minutes, uh, depending on obviously how, how sort of hot your oven can get to 180. Uh, and that so it will come out nice and crispy and nice and soft and warm inside. And there is the iconic signature butter, Marmite butter, uh, to accompany that. If you're not ravenous, I would definitely hold back on that for the starter because it goes really, really well with the starter. Uh, both the veg vegetarian and the uh, and the normal meat uh, um, starter, uh, they're both quite different. So I'm going to go through both of them at the at the same time. Uh, there's no sort of cooking essentially involved. A little bit for the vegetarian, but again, it's super super simple. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to go through it with you now, uh, and I'll plate the ham hock one but obviously with the asparagus you can play that as i always say exactly how you would like so we'll move straight on to the starter so this is the vegetarian uh, vegetarian tray and this is the meat tray so i'll go through them both because there's a bit of crossovers on both of them as well so with a vegetarian you'll have a poached duck egg which is labeled duck egg and essentially that is pre-cooked uh, so it's nice and runny in the center so very very gently warm that through uh, in some simmering water for no more than 60 to 90 seconds I would say drain it off give it a nice season done this is uh, a nice little uh, green bean and it says you'll see this is a garden fresh English garden pea salad on the menu it says broad beans the actual I mean bless our, uh, our veg supplier the broad the, the actual uh, peas were so large they obviously mistaken them for broad beans but they are peas but I didn't want to send them back because they're absolutely delicious so green bean and fresh pea salad with some beautiful Bernoise croutons that are in there. If for whatever reason the air's got to them, they've gone a little bit stale, just regen them in the oven with your asparagus, obviously not on the same tray, uh, for literally two or three minutes and they'll go nice and crispy again. Uh, for you guys only, this is for two people, it's quite a lot of gerbil dressing in there actually, I've gone a bit overboard, so if you are sharing a vegetarian box, please don't use all that on your salad because it'll just spoil the dish completely, just put it in your fridge and, and keep it for another salad down the line. Uh, that's a beautiful chervil dressing and then obviously you have your grilled asparagus which essentially we just haven't cut like the ham hock starter so it's three spears each that you can see in there this is obviously for two people uh, it's not fully cooked so very simply we've heavily charged if it's not fully cooked very simply apply a little bit of a uh, tiny bit of oil or butter into the oven for two to three minutes just to reheat it and that is your starter the only crossover one uh, for both is this beautiful smoked mayonnaise, which you can see the sort of colour, slightly sort of tainted uh, sort of smoke colour in there. It smells absolutely delicious, but that is for both dishes. Uh, so that's your vegetarian starter. And this is your normal starter, which is your beautiful ham hock uh, and chicken and uh, apricot, which we've soaked uh, in apricot juice, actually, as you can see that. I mean, that is absolutely delicious. Uh, all done ready and ready to go. I have stressed on the uh, on the instructions, please make sure you pull it out uh, a good 15 to 20 minutes before this has been out. And you can sort of see it's nice and soft, just soft on the edges. And the reason being is because you don't want cold, cold meat and really tough and firm. We put the, we put the cooking liquor of the ham hock and a bit of chicken liquor in there as well. That will set like jelly. So you do just want that just to relax and just come to room temperature. You'll have your beautiful apricot ketchup, which is probably one of my favorite ketchups that we've made here. This is the first time for me. I think it tastes absolutely delicious. You'll see flecks of, uh, of black sort of dots in there because we put a little bit of vanilla in there as well. Uh, it doesn't sweeten it because obviously vanilla isn't naturally sweet anyway. It gives it a nice seasoning. Uh, it goes with it really, really well. Uh, and then obviously, as, as suggested, as, as mentioned before with the vegetarian, you have a lovely, uh, a lovely smoked mayonnaise. And then uh, the salad is a broad bean, uh, sorry, is a green bean, apologies, and asparagus, grilled asparagus salad, uh, which we've left quite chunky. Uh, so it sort of gives that sort of depth uh, of, of texture 
when you're when you're eating this is for one person here and again there's quite a lot of this as well to be fair um we ordered like we ordered I think, two boxes of green beans and they were, they were delicious uh, so we thought we'll go a bit over over the top on those so that's it that's it started so it, it, it does warm itself uh, to the uh, to the sort of bread keeping the bread sauce so i'll just quickly show you how to season this and then i will plate it and then that is the start course over super super simple a little bit of extra virgin olive oil whatever oil you like like to use rapeseed oil or or yeah, whatever oil you like to do or a seasoned oil i won't go too heavy on it there's a little bit of extra virgin on there none of this has been seasoned at all so i like to have a little bit of pepper in there as well and then mainly a nice pinch of salt i'm going for more than sea salt if you use table just beware because it's uh, quite high in sodium uh, so it can taste quite uh, it can drastically change basically so stir that around a little bit you just want this to be a nice fresh vibrant you know you don't need you don't need, you need a heavy seasoning i mean we've got two sort of accompaniments there that are super super rich and basically just very gently we'll just, we want to sort of leave that terrine if i was going to sort of leave that terrine um visually so you can sort of see the beautiful apricots and the, and the beautiful chicken and ham going through there uh, but equally just sort of plate the uh plate the salad just to the, to the one side which is there so that's to one side like a quick, quick wash clean the spoon smoke mayonnaise which is nice and thick this goes really really well with the ham uh well with the whole dish actually to be fair but it's uh this work really well with the ham and hot. Nice spoon of that, just the side. We'll taste the smoke almost instantly with that. And then beautiful ketchup. I'm going to go a couple of dots with this. I'm going to go one on the terrine. Something else up there. And then just one up. I'm quite heavy with this as well. It's slightly acidic, not, not nothing, nothing major. It's slightly acidic. And those two together a lovely flavor contrast so super simple guys but really really delicious even more delicious if you're having a little bit of bread with it as well which is, again i'd highly recommend saving so that is your starter it's your easter holiday uh, easter uh, easter box which is your uh ham hock chicken apricot terrine with your uh, green bean asparagus salad um apricot ketchup and your smoked mayonnaise that is your starter it's your easter Easter weekend, which I hope you enjoy. Again, please make sure you have it with the bread and join me after this to do your lamb. Okay, guys, so hope you enjoyed your starter. Uh, now we go straight into the main course, which again, I'll be doing the, uh, the, the vegetarian and the meat as well. Uh, so we start off with, we'll do the meat option because the majority of the garnish is exactly the same as the vegetarian. This is obviously we're replacing the lamb uh, with a beautiful celera, but we've treated it exactly the same. And we're also replacing the lamb sauce with a beautiful mixed, uh, mint dressing. So for your uh, for your first course or for your for your main event, so your lamb, uh, we've got a beautiful rump of lamb which has been brined uh, for four days. It's, it's full of season, and we've also um, we've also, as you can see, we've also uh, marinated it in a wild garlic and uh, like a little harissa sort of paste as well. So it has got a little bit of spice to it like that, but it won't really penetrate the dish too much at all. But there's some beautiful wild garlic in there. This is for one person, so we've halved it. So the piece that you'll get is. It's quite a nice large piece, it's about 16 ounces uh, raw. So it was a really nice size actually. Uh, with the uh, garnish, you've got some beautiful Jersey raw potatoes that we've just roasted, uh, pan roasted in some butter and some uh, thyme and garlic. Uh, we had to scrub these loads because they came in super, super dirty. So they're quite clean for jerseys. We had to super, uh, super scrub those. Some beautiful local wild garlic uh, pesto. Uh, we pick our wild garlic from uh, Longden Green. There's absolutely loads, so if any of you live local, uh, to London, uh, absolutely go to the green, there's absolutely shitloads there. Uh, some beautiful creamed minted peas, which are there, which is literally what it says on the tin. Beautiful blanched peas with some mint, and um, we've reduced the cream down with the mint stalks in, so you get a real nice sort of minty flavour. And then you get some compressed gem. The majority of you, sorry that, the majority of you will get a whole gem lettuce that we've, uh, that we've barbecued, uh, but this is for one portion, or if, if obviously there's some boxes of three out there, which there are plenty this weekend actually, uh, you'll have one whole one and a half but essentially you halve it as soon as you get it anyway so there's no real uh, issue or difference with that and then of course your beautiful lamb sauce as well for the vegetarian it's the exact same thing obviously minus the lamb and lamb sauce and replacing these with a beautiful whole barbecue celeriac which has been marinated in the exact same marinade 
it's super dark. You can see the sort of charred edges. It's completely cooked. That just obviously needs reheating fully and will take about 20 to 25 minutes to heat that and roast that up. And then you've got a beautiful um, mixed uh, mint uh, dressing as well. You've got a mint uh, vinaigrette also on top. You've got a nice mint oil, which is all natural, which is absolutely delicious as well. It'll go really, really well. But it's quite, it's quite a wet dish with everything, so it should be super simple. So without further ado, the lamb itself has been out uh, of the fridge for about an hour. So I'm just going to cut this up. Uh, we'll sort of cut the very top of it just here, super simple. And then you want to retain as much of that marinade onto the lamb as possible. And I mean, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even say any parchment paper. I think with the oil and everything, it should be absolutely fine. But wow, the smell is absolutely incredible. You can actually, like, you can really smell the barbecue flavour of it. It's absolutely delicious. So that goes straight on to your tray and squeeze all that marinade out. Super simple, right on top, and then go straight into your tray, just like that. And then go straight into your oven for 108, at 180 degrees. A small piece like this will take about 10 to 12 minutes to reheat. A larger piece will probably take between 12 if your oven's really good, 15 if it's, if, it, if it's decent, and then maybe a little bit longer if it isn't. But again, I, I, would, I, would, I would recommend not overcooking this. It's fully cooked, remember, we've, we've poached it. It's fully cooked, we just want to reheat it. If you're not adventurous at this stage, pop your potatoes on the same tray as well, okay? There's no problem with that at all. It'll, it'll get all stuck in the marinade, it'll be absolutely delicious. If you're adventurous, a little bit like me, I'm gonna show you the, the, how, to, how to reheat them in the pan, because we just wanna caramelize the gem lettuce, and we also wanna put more heat into those potatoes, or a little more caramelization in those potatoes, like it says on the instructions. But if you're not, don't worry. You can even put your gem lettuce on the same tray and just make it in the oven, it's totally up to you. It won't take quite 20 minutes, it'll probably take about 15, uh, for the potatoes and the gem lettuce, that's it. It's super, super simple. With your celeriac veggies, you lovely vegetarian people, make sure uh, this goes in for about 25 minutes because you want the core of that super hot, okay? And all the outside will roast up, it'd be absolutely delicious, that one. Okay, so I'm gonna pop that into the oven for, uh, well, yeah, for about between sort of 10 to 12 minutes because you want this oven super hot and we just wanna reheat it, that's what it is. But also we're gonna give it a rest for about five minutes as well. And while that's in the oven, I'm gonna go jump straight on to showing you how to reheat your potatoes and your gem lettuce because this is exactly what you wanna do at home. As soon as this goes in, get a strand of potatoes and gem, okay? Okay, so lamb is in. So if you wanna come over, and I will literally show you how to eat the gem lettuce. I'm literally putting my stove on straight away. If you want to come up, I'll leave it. Gas is fine. I turn it off because of the, uh, of the sound in the, uh, for the video, so make sure you can hear us. Okay, perfect. So that's on. So put a non stick frying pan on, vegetable oil straight in, let that heat up. While that's heating up, I'm simply just going to cut my gem lettuce bag open. And it's been, this has been backpacked with absolutely nothing. It's been backed, it's been backed slightly warm. Uh, so as soon as it's come, off the um, off the barbecue, we've literally um, literally just placed the uh, the, the gemini strains the bag. So with a bit of condensation. So I put some butter, I'll just put some butter out somewhere, but it seems to have gone. Um, yeah, we basically put the gemini strains the bag, so that the condensate or well, the heat of it sort of condensates inside. So it sort of just slightly denatures it. But again, it's in the centre. It is literally completely, so I wouldn't say completely raw, but it's super firm, so that, that needs attending to, which we'll do. The outside is super, super soft, and then the potatoes, obviously, as normal, we'll get those nice and coloured with a little bit of butter, and uh, the gem nuggets we'll place in flesh side, straight down, so that colours up nicely. We'll place it back on the tray, strap back into the oven, super, super simple. Okay, so that should be, uh, we'll set up a little bit. I should be getting into the, uh, the heat there, hopefully. You don't want to put it in when it's too uh, it's too chilly. We'll make sure it's nice and nice hot. Okay, that should be stuck. There we are. Just stuck. Okay. Those so are going to start to roast. I'm going to grab some butter, and we're back in two seconds. Okay, 
paper. So we just want to get a little bit of colorization on the outside of the skins. I've got it straight away. And then on the inside of this, we just want to put a little bit of seasoning. None of this has been seasoned to be fair, so we just want to put a little bit of seasoning. So a little bit of table salt on the inside, straight down. Because of the moisture, that will start to colour straight away and will, will sort of create a nice little sizzle. As you can see, the outside of these potatoes are starting to colour up straight away, like proper nice jerseys. And we'll knock that down because there's enough residual heat in that pan to 100% uh, give it a nice colour. So you can see the centre of that is colouring straight away, which is great. Push that down, beautiful. There we are, look at those potatoes now, colouring absolutely superbly. So add a little bit of butter in there now. There we are. Nice little seasoning. On the potatoes. A little bit of garlic. It's found itself on the, uh, in, the in the spuds as well, which is perfect. They've cut it up super nice. As has the lettuce. Beautiful. Turn that back over and we'll cook it on that side. And that is it. Super simple. I just added a little bit of colour and a little bit of flavour to your potatoes and your gemmettis. Lamb's in. They'll take, as I said, the lamb's been probably in for about three minutes, so I'll knock it down to about eight. And I'll take it out. Once I take it out, I'll uh, obviously let you know. You'll see how it looks like when it's taken out. And then five minutes after that, that's when we'll carve it. It needs that little bit of a rest. In the meantime, what we'll do is we'll start giving the wild garlic, make sure that's at room temperature. The minty peas, we won't heat just yet, it's a little bit too early, but that's a simple reheat in the microwave, 30 to 45 seconds. And then your lamb sauce needs to go onto your stove and obviously reheat it, but again, it's way too early for that. We'll wait till the lamb comes out and it's resting. So, see you in eight minutes when the lamb comes out. Okay, guys, so the timer has just gone off on the oven for the potatoes, gem lettuce, and more importantly for that. So I'm gonna take it out and just show you. This is a bit So here's the potatoes. So you can see, beautiful colour on there. I'm going to leave those in the pan uh, because they can rest as well. And then on the flip side, you've got a beautiful sort of roasted caramelised gem lettuce as well. So pop that there. There is the lamb. It's barely changed in size because we've water back it shouldn't, but you'll see the crust is starting to, or the, the marinade is really starting to sort of crust on there. Super, super soft, super, yeah, it's beautifully hot, but it just needs to sit and rest. And it's a rest on that on that tray. It's absolutely perfect. So I'm going to rest that for about four to five minutes, even for the video. To be fair, I'm going to rest that to four to five minutes. Leave it there. These will, these will retain heat absolutely fine. If you are a little bit worried, you can just put them back in your oven for a couple of minutes as you're carving the lamb, if you want to. And then uh, the peas, I'm just going to pop in the microwave. You can alternatively heat those on the stove for a little bit more control, which I, arguably I'd actually recommend. But you can. The, 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 the cream isn't reduced as much as we normally do, uh, simply because. It, Mix a nice creamed pea mix, but if you would like to, to be sort of confident, then yeah, just heat it in a pan, alternatively in the microwave. And the uh, the, the wild garlic pesto is to be enjoyed at room temperature. That's it. So join me in about four minutes, uh, and obviously the sauce is on as well. So join me in about four minutes, and we'll come to car plate. Okay, guys, so it's been about four minutes, uh, four to five minutes. So I've just reheated the uh, the peas in the microwave, and as you can see, not split at all, absolutely perfect. The uh, pesto is obviously room temperature still. Uh, Sauce will just pop back on to, uh, to heat beautifully. I'm not boiling that or reducing it, it's the sauce consistency straight away, so I've got to worry. The lamb's all ready to carve, and the uh, obviously the potatoes and the gem lettuce are still red, red hot. I uh, just need to drain some of the butter off the gem lettuce because it's like a sponge. But apart from that, it is uh, absolutely beautiful. So come on down, and I will show you a how to plate, and uh, also you'll see the carve firsthand. As you can see, the lamb hasn't moved, so I haven't swapped it for another piece or anything like that so you can take me face value that is the exact piece of lamb and if I popped up then again you can uh, take the mic at me after it's a little bit of lamb on the underside there so this is a rump obviously so essentially if you were to cook this from raw it would potentially have a bit more of a texture than what you would like uh, because we've water back well grind it and water bathed it it should be a little bit more nice and softer but make sure you use it all go into the center as you can see the cuisson we like to call is absolutely stunning. And please, if you're not used to eating lamb sort of pink, please do give this one a go uh, because honestly, it will, you, will, you won't regret it. And uh, that is what, for me, that is what um, eating lamb is all about. It's super soft, super tasty, 
it doesn't need any seasoning. Please don't season it. It's been brined. It does not require any seasoning whatsoever. And we'll place that. Actually, you know what? What I'm going to do? Is I'm going to put the peas underneath it. So there's oh wow, the mint of that is so strong. That's absolutely wonderful. Jersey peas, pesto. We've gone really over the top with this. Uh, so yeah, to, I mean, use as much as much as or as little as you want, but there's absolutely loads of that. Pesto like this goes. There's no omelette in it. By no means you have to bake it the same way at all. I think it'd be quite nice if you were, if you had things in little pots. You did like a proper Sunday roast. New potatoes at the back, or Jersey wall, should I say? Gemlet is just in front of that. Nice and packed. And then finally, the beautiful sauce, which again is just literally pure, pure lamb. There we are. My mouth is watering as I'm explaining this to you. I think you're gonna absolutely love this. So it's a beautiful brined, barbecued and water bath piece of lamb rump that's coated in a beautiful wild garlic and harissa paste, minted cream peas underneath, wild garlic pesto, roasted gem lettuce and barbecued obviously, and then your Jersey rolls just behind with a beautiful rich lamb sauce. That guys is your Easter weekend's main course and you are going to love it. Okay guys, so really hope you enjoyed the main course. I'm smiling because me and Mike have just eaten it and we're just uh, absolutely delighted with how the lamb come, uh, that lamb's come out and beautiful texture and colour and cuisson and the garnishes are so super flavoursome. So I really hope guys you enjoyed it. It mean the world to me if you repost and tag me in all your main course, all your, all your dishes, but your main course, I was really, really happy with it. So I hope for you uh, as well. So on to dessert guys. First of all, before I go through the, through the ingredients, I've um, the, I put the sponge in the oven uh, once I turned everything off, after the lamb came out, I turned the oven off, left the door slightly open, and I put my sponge in. And honestly, the texture of that sponge is just delicious. It's, it's, obviously, it's a steam sponge, just give it a little bit of a crust on the outside now, just leave it in the oven, it's absolutely banging. So, that's going to be servable straight away with your chocolate sauce, which is someone's already had a little go at my one, but yours won't, it shouldn't look like that, unless the curry gets a bit crazy. I'm going to pop that into the microwave quickly now for 30 seconds, and I'll be back. that'll give me the time to talk through your garnish. So you have got your beautiful steamed dark chocolate sponge. You have got a whipped white chocolate and vanilla cremeau, which is like one of my favorite things ever to eat. Um, I haven't gone shy with it as well. I've got like a, for two people, like a whole four ounce, but I've got two ounce each of white chocolate cremeau. You don't need to all eat it at once. And you have also got, as always, the Black Forest, well, it's not always the same flavor, but you've got Black Forest ghetto, uh, Black Forest, sorry, flavoured ice cream, which is cherries, black currants, and blackberries in there as well. Uh, super delicious, really sort of tastes like a uh, sort of wintery, sort of springy, should I say? No, it is definitely winter berries. Uh, but anyway, those are in there, beautiful, beautiful texture. Uh, for this uh, flavour, for this uh, video, I'll just do a spoon out of there, because one of you people will be getting that. Time has just gone on the microwave, which has got literally absolutely everywhere. And I love it when this happens on the video because it shows that not everyone is perfect. That has literally leaked everywhere, but the little bit that I've got in there is enough for this video. That's good, right? So you actually see me fuck up. That's what, that's what it's all about. It's like, if any of us can fuck up. So don't put that in the microwave for 30 seconds. 10, 15 seconds is clearly more than enough. So that's the sauce. This is the sponge. I'm gonna plate it before I fuck up anymore. So, sponge, just off centre. Again, guys, this is exactly how I would do it, but this is the joy of trying at home. You plate it and you eat it however you like. This is, the, the, the viscosity of this is quite thick. It's like a, it's like a super thick, rich, bouncy, because uh, of the white chocolate, bouncy sort of, um, sort of uh, whipped cream, uh, but the flavour is just unbelievable. So, I've sort of just made a little well in there, and that's for my ice cream. So, just sit your ice cream on top of there, and what it'll do is it'll encourage you to eat through it so you get all those sort of flavours that come nostalgic with uh, with a Black Forest Ghetto essentially, which is the sort of vibes that I was going for. A spoon of your ice cream, so you'll have a nice little ploosh. And then my completely overheated 
over boil just everything just absolutely murdered it basically that right on top of your chocolate sponge make sure you go over the chocolate sponge because that's what it's all about fortunately there's enough in there to serve and show you guys we'll get that out of the way and there we are guys you're beautiful rich indulgent soaked in amaretto sponge white chocolate creme underneath which you whip back black forest ice cream dark chocolate well overheated sauce and that is your easter dessert which after the lamb it's going to go down absolutely and after that if you still got room which i think i don't think i will but if you still have got room we have gone for a world's first dine at home cadbury's mini egg chocolate fudge so enjoy that i always say a more than caesar if you want but you can do what you want just eat it and enjoy it and have it with a cup of tea or a coffee or whatever you want to have it with and that concludes guys our little cook along video for easter sunday or easter weekend should i say because you can have it whichever day you like and uh, join us the same place the same time next week the menu i'm putting up over the weekend uh, i think we've already sold about 25 so it's starting to slow down a bit please don't forget about us i know you've probably got all your restaurant bookings which is fine uh, but please make sure you keep supporting us because if we don't need any support we're no longer so uh, again the, the rest of April will be going up as well very shortly. Uh, so any, any people for any um, uh, uh, birthdays or occasions or anniversaries, please uh, keep us in the loop and uh, keep us as an option if you would like the Dine at Home box to deliver to your home. Otherwise, eat well, have a fantastic weekend and make sure you tag me in all your pictures. See you, same time, same place next week.